What's good everyone and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're reacting to Game Theory. The doors are just beginning. Now, for all of you that don't know this game, and I <clears throat> would kind of question how you don't know, but Doors is a Roblox game that had like two parts into it. You go from door 1 to 100, and so on. Just open a door, go to the next room, and repeat the process until you get to door 100. That was the basic of it. And then in the sequel, it was the same thing, going from one door to the last door. And yeah, simple enough, right? Wrong, because you have to avoid entities that are trying to kill you in both parts. And if you don't, well, you die, start all over, continue it all over again. And the, the best thing of all, it has lore. I, I don't even know if I said that right. Lore. It has a lore. So, considering that we have a new theory video, that means that we have a new thing that was discovered in Doors. Years Part 3 came out. I was not informed if it was or not. Been busy with other stuff. And so here we are. Let's see what's up with doors now. Because last time it was involving angels, dev, uh, God's alternate counterpart from the underworld, and uh, so on and so forth. This. <laughs> It was not something I expected, to be honest, but it, it's a true thing, apparently. So let's see, as I said before, what Doors has now. So if you enjoyed this reaction video, hit the like button below, hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button, me notify immediately when a new video comes out. If you have any videos you would like to recommend that I should react to, put it down in the comment section below, and I'll react to them as soon as possible. And... If you want to see this original video before I react to it, go ahead, look in the description. The link's going to be right there. Check it out. Give Game Theory some love and support, and then come right back. But if you want to see me do it, then... Like, the reaction itself before anything else, then just stay on. But still give Game Theory some love and support for the video they made. Now, with this all said, let's start. <laughs> well, that's a demon if I ever saw one. It's behind you, isn't it? Oh, please don't tell me it's an ending that has... Hello, Internet. Only bad Welcome ones. to Game Theory, the show that leaves no stone unturned and no door unopened. Oh. Huh. I went through a door, though. The name of the game is Go Through Doors, and I went through a door. Ah, yes. The smash hit Roblox game, Go Through Doors. Love that one. Although, I actually think Matt had the right idea, because it is now my turn to jump into the mysterious abyss that is Roblox Doors. A game set in an abandoned hotel where to win, you have to, get this, walk through doors. I know. Shocking. Though, on the surface, it might sound pretty simple. Things escalate pretty quickly. There's demonic oh, entities that, that are trying to stop us. A homunculus made of flesh and bone known as the figure that sabotages. 
montages are only means of escape, and there's a bunch of extra rooms called the rooms. Yeah, they like to keep their naming conventions simple here. However, in the rooms, it no longer means you have a hundred doors to go through, but a thousand. It's actually quite a challenge. Fortunately, through most of this, there's a mysterious blue sparkle that is trying to help us escape. This huh. is Guiding Light, and they offer us advice when we die, show us the path during the chase sequences, and offer us tools like the crucifix to stop entities dead in their tracks. We believed in yep. the previous theories that Guiding Light was the one manipulating the halls of the hotel into the random arrangement you encounter in each run, confusing and trapping the entities within. Sadly though, they aren't able to help us all the time. Once you enter the rooms, their power fades, but there is a similar yellow light entity waiting for us. They're just less helpful. We learn that this spirit is named Curious Light, although their name leaves a little to be desired, as they don't seem as much curious as they do aloof. They refuse to give us hints, and yet they want us to keep trying. Here's a thought, maybe give me a hint and I'll do better next time. Curious Light's actions don't seem to make a lot of sense. That was until I played the latest update, known simply as the Back Door Update. We suspected that Curious Light was actually trying to escape the rooms, with the final door leading to a bunch of other open doors floating in a void. Other dimensions, as proven by the appearance of Bob the Skeleton, who is actually from an entirely different Roblox game, and whose name tag we can find in the rooms. It felt like Curious Light ah, wanted access to this yeah, room in order true. to escape and explore more worlds, and it seems like we were right. Because in Back Doors, Curious Light is back, no longer stuck in the rooms, and this time they are actually trying to help us. We've got a new speedrun challenge on our hands, as we've got to go from door minus 50 to door zero in just one minute. That is not a lot of time. It's almost as if they don't what? want us snooping around for lore. But fear not, friends, even with the dreaded time that, that what you want to go through 50 doors if whatever is in between in under a minute that means you have to finish each room within 10 seconds yes from beginning to end with 10 seconds and then have like five or less just to pull a lever And using whatever time you have left as spare time. Yeah, that's not easy. And that just screams suspicion. Hmm. Time limit, I was able to uncover the secrets this little update had for us, how it connects to everything we know so far, and what it could mean for the Floor 2 update that's coming soon. So grab your vials of starlight and drink up, theorists. We're about to unlock even more door lore. That was right. That is satisfying to say. A cool detail to kick us off with huh. is how you access the back door update inside the game Maybe. itself. Much like the main game, you stand in an elevator and it will take you to the first floor of your next run. In this case, door minus 50. However, you can't just walk straight into this new elevator. If you're new to doors, you'll find that the back door's elevator is blocked by a barrier of yellow light. At this point, if something glows yellow, we know it has to be related to Curious Light, matching their yellow sparkles and death screens from the rooms. Sure enough, if you unlock the achievement completing the rooms, the first place we encounter Curious Light, and head back to the lobby, you'll find the back door's elevator is suddenly open to you. Curious Light was stuck in the rooms, but now he's been freed by us completing that final door, allowing him to escape into the hotel's version of the back rooms. That act alone seems to have given Curious Light a change of heart. Heart. In the past, Curious Light didn't seem interested in helping us escape. I usually don't give out hints. And yet, in this new update, they seem to be doing exactly that. When dying from haste, the entity that comes when the timer runs out, Curious Light will say this. I've given you a method to add more time to the clock, though. You're welcome. Look around for the levers I placed for you. They can be anywhere. They're referring to the levers that you find around the back doors map that add time back to your clock, sometimes even up to a full minute. Without those, you literally cannot beat this new update. Plus, not only have they added a way to give you more time, but much like Guiding Light, they've also added an item to help us out, one that can regenerate our health and help us move faster. This item is called Vial of Starlight. It's yellow, and the primary symbol Suspicious. inside the vial is a star, which matches the sparkles we've seen from Curious Light. Curious Light has given us the only method available to beat this dang update, completely changing their attitude towards us. But why the change? Because being in the rooms felt hopeless. It was a thousand doors, there was no way anyone could win, so why bother? They wanted to escape, but they just didn't see it happening. Until it did. We beat the rooms and let Curious Light out into the basement of the hotel. Suddenly, there was a chance. If we can do that, if we can beat a thousand rooms, what else are we capable of? What else could we help them achieve? And so, they've perked up, realizing that we might be able to help them get what they want. And what is it they want? 
Um, well, if you do manage to get to the end of the back doors, you'll find a final door marked 0000. Proceeding through this door starts a short cutscene where the door begins to break open with a yellow light and suddenly you are back in the hotel lobby with an empty door frame behind you, covered in yellow cracks and Curious Light's symbol. Last time it seemed like Curious Light wanted to access multiple realities, with all those different doors floating in the void in room A1000, but now he seems determined to get into the main hotel. They've once again used us to open a door that they can't open themselves, and we've led it straight to their desired destination. He even leaves a bottle of Starlight, a larger version of the vials we've been collecting, as a sort of thank you before we enter the final door. However, mm. while I've been suspicious of Curious Light and their motives, there was something else in this update that gave me pause. When you die, Curious Light gives you breakdowns of the entity that killed you, like they did in the rooms, but their tone has once again changed. In the rooms, they didn't really have a name for anything, they just said things like, I'm not too sure on what to call it. You could just call it A60, I don't know. But now, they're offering more solid opinions. Hmm. Suspicious. Uh, could call it the look man, if you like. That's what I call it. He does have names for these things. He's actually giving you his attention. Except for one specific entry. One of these new entities is called Blitz, which is a modified version of Rush from the main game. But if you die to it, Curious Light says this. Oh, one of my favorites. She said we could call that one Blitz. Who is she? We've never uh -huh. encountered a she before, but whoever she is, Curious Light seems to recognize her authority. He doesn't question her, he just tells us exactly what he's been told. No opinions, no wisecracks, just direct answers. And if this she is telling Curious Light about the entities, is she the one behind everything? Pulling the strings? I've got some good news for you theorists because I believe we know who this character is. And it all comes down to this symbol and this painting. This symbol is the binding circle that appears when using the crucifix on an entity. We've examined this before and broken down the different parts of the circle to figure out exactly what it's doing. Like the Star of Solomon in the middle that became associated with the occult and demons. Which makes sense when it literally traps the demonic entities we find throughout the hotel. But there's one part that we didn't talk about. The ring of symbols around the Star of Solomon. These symbols are wingdings, and if you convert that text to a normal English font and then wingdings. run it through a Caesar cipher, you'll get the message, one of the three architects marked by Celestials assists you. Given that this is on the binding circle when using a crucifix, an item that glows blue and traps the entities in a blue light, I think it's pretty safe to say that the architect it's referring to is Guiding Light. Until now, we've been referring to Guiding Light as an angelic being, due to the sword bearing angel statue in the courtyard as well as other religious imagery. However, we did get this tweet from one of the developers saying the crucifix indoors does not mean the game is going in a religious direction at all. And this translation of wingdings would certainly suggest that too, with Guiding Light not being an angel but an otherworldly being known as an architect. But does that okay. mean that using religious imagery to figure out the lore of this game is immediately debunked? I don't think so. Firstly, other than terminology, it feels like we were kind of on the right track with Guiding Light. We suspected Guiding Light was an angel twisting the halls of the hotel to trap the demonic entities. An architect is someone who builds and designs buildings, so Guiding Light being named an architect makes sense as they are the one changing the building. We may not have been right about the terminology used for Guiding Light, but we ended up at a similar conclusion because we found some religious influence. And that word influence is important right. because what I showed you isn't the full tweet. It continues. It will remain mostly secular other than inspiration and will be all original. The developers aren't denying that they're taking inspiration from religion, just that it's not inherent inherently a religious story. And here's the thing, we actually see this religious inspiration through the binding circle translated text. One of the three architects marked by Celestials assists you. It implies there are beings above the architects that give them power in some way. They are marked by them. These beings okay. are referred to as Celestials. This word is often used to mean something up high, and in astronomy it refers to things in space, like the term celestial body. But Celestials derive from the Latin word chiolem, meaning heaven, and was originally used to refer to heavenly beings or angels. So while Guiding Light and Curious Light might not be angels themselves, we might be encountering some otherworldly beings at some point, the Celestials. The space theme continues when we have a look at the painting we can find on floor 60. This floor is where we find the secret passage to the rooms, where Curious Light resides, and it's the only place where this painting appears. The image is named Space Time, which again, seems to be referring to the spacey, otherworldly themes that we've already talked about, especially when you take a look at the symbols. The one in the center matches the yellow sparkle we've seen representing Curious Light across the various 
various rooms and doors. It also matches the symbol found in the vials of starlight provided by Curious Light. In the top right corner, we have a blue crescent moon. Now, if the center symbol is meant to be Curious Light, then it would make sense for the blue symbol to be Guiding Light. It guides us through the hotel with a blue light, and when we use the items gifted to us by Guiding Light, like the crucifix, the symbols that banish the entities are also blue. And would you look at that? At the center of the binding circle is a symbol, a crescent moon, the same symbol that appears in the painting. This is the symbol of Guiding Light, one of the three architects. And with there being three symbols on this painting, I have a sneaking suspicion that means Curious Light is also another one of these architects. But there's one more symbol in this picture. In the bottom right corner, there's a red symbol that you might not be familiar with. This symbol only appears in the game when you add modifiers. Essentially, what? modifiers are designed to make the game more challenging, but in turn, you get higher rewards. They can do things like make the floors more slippery, give you less health at the start of the game, and make entities move faster or appear more frequently. When you activate modifiers, this red symbol appears on the screen, the same red symbol that's in the painting. Given there are no other symbols on this painting, this has to be our third architect that the crucifix wingdings told us about, the one that Curious Light is referencing when it says she. She said we could call that one Blitz. Suddenly, this line from Curious Light makes sense. This new architect knows Blitz's name because modifiers are literally able to change the behavior of the entities in the hotel. She has power over them. She can make them more aggressive, and what's worse, she seems to have power over the other architects. There's a mod that literally deactivates Guiding Light's Guiding Light from Seek's Chase sequence, making that challenge much harder. If you die during the main game with modifiers active, Guiding Light will not appear on the death screen to help you out. And then, if you reach door 60, you will be unable to enter the rooms. It is completely blocked off to you by this mysterious red force, the same color as the force of this final architect. She is the most powerful architect we've encountered, able to control the entities within the hotel and alter the hotel itself, overriding any control Guiding Light has. She is so powerful that Curious Light doesn't question her or her authority. That makes her a scary force to deal with. And I have a feeling that we're going to be dealing with her a lot more in the coming updates. We've been waiting okay. patiently for the Doors Floor 2 update, but back in October, we finally got a sneak peek of what's to come. For achieving the milestone of 4 billion visits, that's billion with a B, the developers gave us a teaser image for Floor 2 known simply as The Mines. Now, I Mines? have to say a huge congratulations to the developers. Oh, heck no, that's terrifying now. Mines are filled with Things of the past, things that died, things that could be buried, things that can be buried, and so on and so forth. That is a really good way to go about it. But question is, do mines have doors? That makes no sense, because... If mines don't have doors, then how would this fit in the game? Because the whole thing about doors is opening doors. 4 billion is a massive achievement and it's incredibly well deserved. But when I saw this image, I immediately started trying to figure out what it meant for the story going forward. What inspiration did the developers take to go down this mineshaft route? I did find a few hotels that have rooms in old mineshafts. One of them's even quite close to me. It's just over in Wales. But there didn't seem huh. to be anything special about them. That. They just felt like gimmicks designed to trap I didn't tourists. know that hotels do like mineshafts. That's, that's actually kind of interesting. And kind of weird. And travel vloggers with unique experiences. However, now that I have the additional piece that is this new architect, I found something that not only ties into our previous theories, but gives us a little more information about what we can expect inside the mines. In our initial theories, we spoke about the main entity of doors, the figure, a creature made of flesh and bones which stood out against the other black, inky, or ghostly entities of the hotel. Based on the use of religious and occult imagery found in the game, like the binding circle, we determined that the figure was a homunculus, a version of a human being being created not by natural means, but through a cult alchemy. Typically, these were made by mixing human flesh, bones, and teeth. And through the final door, where the figure chases us to the elevator, we see piles of flesh throughout the level. This all led us to believe that the next update would take us deep underground, where we'd find the origins of the figure, the place that the cult that created it originally resided. Now that we know that Floor 2 takes place in a mine, I started looking into whether there were any cults that took refuge in mines. It feels like something we see in fiction all the time, but when it came to reality, there was only one 
one very specific answer that I found. In Bolivia, there are groups that worship a spirit that lives in the mind. This spirit is called El Tio. And though his appearance looks huh? like the Christian devil, El Tio is an ambivalent spirit, capable of giving both wealth and destruction. The miners would worship El Tio, there. building a shrine inside the mine and yes. providing offerings to him in order to receive safety. They'd offer things like alcohol, cigarettes, coca leaves, even the blood of llamas. The miners would huh? then light a mine cart on fire full of these offerings and push the cart deep into the mines, never to be seen again. Which is interesting, as we also see a single minecart being pushed down into a deep hole in the recent teaser for the mines update. Could this have been a hole for sacrifices? There are also specific rules you had to follow if you were going into the mines and worshipping El Tio, namely what you could or couldn't bring with you when you went in or out of the mines. Up until 2009, Bolivia was an official Catholic nation, and the majority of its residents still are Catholics today. So, unsurprisingly, worshipping a devil like being wasn't really liked by the Catholic Church. Due to this conflict between the miners and the church, certain rules were followed when going in and out of the mines. Specifically, no Catholic imagery like crucifixes were allowed inside the mines, and no El Tio imagery was allowed outside the mines. The outside world was God's domain, but the mines, the underground, belonged to El Tio. The two were not allowed to mix, which feels very similar to what we're seeing in Doors. Hmm. In this space-time painting, we see both guiding light and this new light, but they are on opposite sides of the painting. They are being shown as diametrically opposed. They cannot coexist, which is why when you activate modifiers, guiding light can no longer help you. If you want guiding light's assistance, you have to remove the modifiers. They cannot be in the same place at the same time. Now again, you know that Doors isn't going for a directly religious story, only taking inspiration from it, and that's what I think we're seeing here. It seems to me like Aww. the mind and this new architect might at least partially be inspired by the minds of Bolivia and the cult of El Tio that lies within, which means that I guiding see. light is going to be of no use to us in this new update. We're likely not going to oh, be crap. able to bring our candle or our crucifix with us, and even if we are, I doubt they're going to have any effect, much like we saw when we entered Curious Light's domain in the rooms. This is her domain, and guiding light is not welcome. The question is, is that a bad thing? El Tio isn't an evil spirit. It can be good or bad depending on how you treat it. We see that in how the modifiers work. The game may get mm. harder, but we get more rewards out of it if we succeed. So while she seems like an opposing force to Guiding Light, who is the one that has been helping us so far, this new architect isn't inherently evil or against us. They may have power over the entities we've encountered so far, but we have no idea what awaits us in the mines. And much like in the mines of Bolivia, working with her might be our only chance of surviving whatever new threat awaits us. And then, what happens when Curious Light is thrown into the mix? We freed him into the hotel after the back doors update, so I could see him coming down to the mines as well. He seems to get along with this new architect in some way, or at least they've been in the same place long enough for her to start bossing him around. Maybe he'll offer us some much needed assistance. That or he'll just mock us the entire time for dying. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens when the Floor 2 update finally releases. But hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. And if you wanted to see how stressful the new time-sensitive backdoors update truly was, click the video on the left where Matt does a pretty good job at getting through every door. Or if you're enjoying the lore of Roblox games, why not check out our video on the right where we uncover the lore of Rainbow Friends. It's far less culty, but it's a little more murdery. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Okay. That's an interesting way to go about it. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing or a good thing it isn't like two opposing forces or anything like that from religion or anything of such this is more of two forces that have similarities to it that's it okay well, that's interesting I'm still curious how the mines would technically fit, since mines really don't have doors. They more have gates, if I'm correct. Yeah, they're more like gates, if I have to say anything about it. But yeah, this is an interesting way to go about it. And it's actually kind of interesting to see the inspiration for now. For like... This whole thing. What was the purpose of the lights? And it seems like we understand now. I guess. This will be a really interesting one. Because if it is true. 
and we're only getting this one archetype helping us or dooming us, it's going to be a, a really big picture to uh, see through. Yeah, didn't really expect that to be the case, but, uh, and then we got this. We have Curious Light actually doing something. Huh. I thought he would only do something when we did something for him, but I guess since we opened the door, I guess he's gonna kind of help us. I guess it depends on his interest. It really will come down to what's going to happen in the next update, is it? <sighs> I think that this would be the case. Hmm. Anyway, I would like to hear your opinion about this. Do you think Curious Light is going to be helpful for us, or is he literally going to be dumping on us? Trashing us? Mocking us, insulting us, anything that matches those words. And are you excited for this update? Because it does seem really cool, really interesting, and all that. But uh, with all this all said, I hope you all enjoy. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content, provide it, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button to be notified immediately when your video comes out, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!